You're listening to Biz Quick. This is where Julie and Corey provide quick and useful information to small business owners. Biz Quick is the podcast where small business owners get to showcase their businesses and receive expert advice and guidance in areas many entrepreneurs struggle with. And you, the listener, get solutions, tips, and tricks on real world topics that many small business owners face. Julie and Corey are the experts small businesses hire when they need solutions. And the BizQuick podcast is just one way they deliver those solutions. Let's start the show. Welcome to BizQuick. I'm Julie. And I'm Corey. And on today's show, we have a special episode for you. Corey and I are just going to talk about failure. What does failure mean to me? How has failure helped me to be successful? What does failure mean to me? Giving up. Not showing up. Settling for less than that's, that's possible for you. I think that's what all things like my, my big word is consistency, right? Showing up every day and putting in the work, doing the even the smallest trivial tasks that move you closer to success. And it's not really a failure until you quit or quit showing up. Failure is a big, big piece of any success that I've had. Failure primarily just means feedback. It means I've tried something and now I'm getting feedback as to whether the thing I tried worked or if I'm getting redirected or if I have to try something different. It's an everyday process. I'm not successful because I get somewhere or my, I've met my goal. I'm successful on with every day that I am doing something and I'm challenging myself. There's a difference between giving up and admitting defeat. Admitting defeat means that you have tried everything that you possibly could and you still weren't able to complete whatever it is. Nothing wrong with that. Failure has been an amazing way to uncover what my superpowers are. So failure gives me the kick I need to pick myself up. It forces me to start learning all over again and doing all the things I didn't do right the first time. You can at least use that as your playbook. And you can keep on looking back and say, well, this play failed. How do we adjust it? How do we look at how to make this work? My motto has been self-care. And I pushed myself to be successful for myself in the self-care area. I think the word failure has such a negative connotation. And if you can spin it to look at it as a learning experience, then it actually has a positive connotation. Don't think of it as a failure. Think of it as an experience, a learning experience, and a way to get better. You know, in business or in life, we should always be failing at something. That's not my motto, but I think I might make it my motto. That was a montage of some of the friends of the show giving us their quotes on what failure means to them or how failure has impacted their lives and careers. So some interesting tidbits thrown in there. Failure. Is this a topic that makes you uncomfortable, Corey? No, because I don't fail, Julie. <laughs> so uh, basically I'm going to do all the talking today. Yes. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. No, uh, I've, I've never really looked at failure. Like I've never been haunted by failure or scared of failure or anything like that. And I mean, despite my sunny disposition, uh, you would know that I'm I'm a, a, mostly an optimist when it comes to everything. Like I, I generally think that everything's going to work out as long as I'm continuing to work at whatever it is that I'm doing. And that even if something doesn't work out, there's always a lesson to be learned to be used later. So like, I've never really like, I mean, even playing sports and, and whatnot in high school and afterwards, it, I never looked at losing a game as like, oh, we suck or whatever. It's like, all right, well, they were either better than us, we, you know, we didn't show up or, you know, half our team wasn't allowed to play because they got kicked out of a previous game, which happened on more than one occasion. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, certain things like that happened. So it's it like there and, and it sounds like you're making excuses, but it's, you know, you, you know why it's not that you're writing it off or it's not like I was writing it off like, oh, well, you know, I'm making myself feel there. It's like, well, I know I know why it didn't work out. And next time, you know, maybe we won't get in a fight. <laughs> you know <laughs> yes yeah yeah um i that's a um 
I guess none of that surprises me. I was wishing we had a sound effect for when you said the part about your sunny disposition. I would have liked it, you know, the boom, boom. Or the, the sad trombone. Yes. Wah, wah. Exactly. Um, I think, do you think maybe failure is easier for you um, from some pers- for, from some angles because you have zero presence on social media? And so you're not, you one, you don't see like this, the highlight reels of all these other people because you're not on social media. And two, you're not really ever broadcasting anything that's happening in your world. Do you, th- do you think that makes it a little bit easier? I mean, that's the way I've been my entire life. So it wasn't, I wouldn't say my entire life, but my adult life, at least and social media really wasn't. I mean, MySpace was a thing when I was in college, but were you on MySpace? No. Okay. I, I, I did sign up for an account just because I was like, what's this whole MySpace thing about? And I saw how much like work you would have to put into it. And by well, it's not a lot of work, but it's like, oh, I have to like commit time to this. Yeah, I'm, I'm out. out. Uh, I'm going to the bar. Exactly. Well, yeah, you know, I, I guess like, so failure for me, I don't really, I don't think of it as a negative thing at all. Um, I don't like, I don't set out to fail on things, but I am okay when I try something and it fails or I make a recommendation for us in the business and it doesn't work out, it fails. I'm okay with that. I do think I struggled a little bit over the past 12 months when, you know, I think a lot of people had this perception that we were doing way better than we were. And we were. (laughs) (laughs) Right, yeah, right. No, we were not. <laughs> yeah, right. That first year was was tough. In fact, you know, we've got a um um I just finished writing a blog that will come out before this podcast airs where I talk about you know the the difference of failure and well, not not failure where I talk about, you know, basically the down payment on being an entrepreneur and really that the down payments come in the form of time, money and relationships. And from the money perspective, how, you know, we went 12 months without paying ourselves, right? We took a couple draws, but that was it. Like we didn't 12 months, right? So you, but I don't think people realized unless we were really very transparent with people, I don't think a lot of people realized how tough that first year was in terms of revenue coming in the door, right? But I don't look at it as a failure. I think I did in the moment where I was like, wow, this is, this is tough. Right. And some of the things I would take really personally, but then as we moved on, it's so much easier to look at it in the rearview mirror and go, I think everything we went through was totally normal. It was just, that's the process that we went through. Yeah, it was, but it's also one of those things where like, I, I, I don't, I would have never, con- I, I didn't even like cross my mind to think of it as a failure because, you know, if a failure for me would have been like six months in and we're like, Oh, this isn't working out. Screw it. Like, you know, it's like, all right, well, let's pivot, let's adjust, let's figure out, let's try this, let's, you know, whatever it is, like, like, it wasn't the, uh, the, like, failure in the sense that it it ended, it was, it was just, I mean, a huge, a very long learning experience. It was, and I think that's part of that, that's one of the things that um, makes you that optimism, that eternal optimist that, you know, I don't think a lot of people know is there, makes you a really good partner, because, you know, I would come up with all of these ideas, like, hey, let's do this. Not that you didn't have ideas because you certainly did, right? But I would, hey, let's try this, let's try this. And you knew exactly when to rein me in versus when like, yeah, let's try it. And you never once got like held me responsible or got mad at me when something didn't work. You'd just be like, oh, that didn't work. Let's, let's, let's keep moving forward, right? Which was nice because there was chances were pretty good. I was probably beating myself up over it, right? Well, and I mean, that, that kind of got me thinking, uh, prior to that comment but it's a good segue into the fact that I don't really have an inner monologue right. so like I don't like if, if some like if I, I fail at anything like if, if something doesn't work out I don't dwell on it at all like I don't think about it and I'm not concerned about what other people think about it either because it's one of those things where I'm like you know you fail too like everybody fails everybody you know screws up you know nobody's perfect so it's you know like and I guess to the social media thing it's like I'm not concerned about what other people think about me because I'm not a I don't really need to put my highlight reel out there but I know that everybody who's got their highlight reel out there there's 90 99 other things that are not going well in their life exactly and I think there's also a there's a benefit to being an underdog or being the new guy on the block right you get you get the opportunity to learn more um and you've got people pulling for you that 
aren't pulling for the person who's been around the company that's been around for 20 years or whatever. But I don't know, failure is such a, it feels like so many people don't like to admit failures and don't like to talk about failures and don't understand the opportunities that exist within failures. Yeah, I'm, I, I totally agree. And it's, it's one of those things. It's like talking about your salary or like, I don't know, your sex life or whatever. It's just certain things that like, that are taboo, so to speak, that you would talk about in a professional situation. You shouldn't um, talk about your sex life in a professional situation. Exactly. That's why I said taboo. <laughs> uh, so, but failure is not, shouldn't be. But it shouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. Like, but there's just like a handful of things that people are like, well, I'm just not going to talk about that because I mean, the last thing that you want to do is because it, it, it the, there's a fine line between admitting that you're human and that you make mistakes and you know, that you're not perfect and, and you've had to try different things to be successful versus dwelling on how terrible you are. Cause that just gets depressing. So, you know, as a business owner, you don't want to show weakness because obviously you're trying to sell yourself, but you also need to come across as human, which is, I think the, the hard part that people have is that they don't realize that their business is an extension of them and that their business also kind of needs to be human. Yeah. I do think that for, you know, the fact that one of, you know, the main things that we help people with, one of the main things that we have done so far since starting our business is helping other people launch businesses. And it makes it a lot easier to kind of give people an idea of what's about to happen or what to expect or how to sort of temper their expectations when we've just been through it. So we can say like, you know, don't, that's one of the reasons we ask people when they're first starting out, like how long can you go without revenue, right? Because it, it may not happen as quickly as you think it will. And I mean, we hope it does. Cause I mean, we've certainly had clients where they've gotten revenue fairly quickly, but we've also had clients where they're, you know, six, seven, eight months in and they're like, I, I don't really, I haven't made anything. They're like, well, right. To be expected. That's why we asked this question up front. And it's not, that's not a failure. That's, that's the learning curve. And that's the, that's the, the process of starting a new business. Yeah. And I think that also there, there is a, a difference there and it kind of depends upon the product or service you're selling, um, et cetera, because if you're selling a service or something like that, yeah, it might, might be a while before you get clients in your door or, or, you know, in your inbox, whatever it is, but the, uh, the thing that we need to think about is it, it, it's different for somebody who let's say has a brick and mortar. Cause like, if you are, let's say you're opening up a restaurant, which I'm about to do, and I don't have income for six to seven months, that might be a problem. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, like uh, th there is a difference and, and you need to figure that out too, because it, it's, it, you don't want to go down with the sinking ship if the ship just isn't built to float. So you need True. to know when to cut up, you know, cut it off. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a very good point. Um, so let's, let's think, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that um, we heard in those, in that montage. Right. So I think I want to start with the very last one, which um, was our uh, dear friend, Lindsay, who talked about that she was going to make failing every day her motto. Yeah. I really liked that. I did too. Um, yeah. And it's, it, uh, uh, so at, on the montage there that you heard at the beginning of the show, that was the very last, Lindsay was the very last person to, to be featured in that. And that, you know, it's that she wants to make failure a part of her life. Yes. Yeah. She's like, it's not my motto, but maybe it should be. Yeah. And I thought that was great because she's looking at it from the perspective of when I fail, I learn and I'm growing and that, and it means progress. So that's a really good thing. So I, I loved what she had to say. Yeah. And I think that for the most part, everybody who, who we got an answer from, it was it, failure was spun in a way that it's a learning experience. It's progress. It shouldn't be a negative. It's um, you know, it, it's a way to get feedback and figure out what your next steps are and, and that type of stuff. And I think that's, a, you know, the cliched story of Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb and he tried 10,000 different ways to whatever, create the light bulb. And they're like, what did you think about that? He's like, well, I found 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb, you know, yeah. which he spun it positive yeah, for exactly. himself, which is actually, you know, speaks very nicely to what Stephanie said, where she said, you know, that it's, it's a learning experience, but it's semantics, right? That if you've got to find a way to spin it from negative to a positive, right? So remove that negative connotation and make it a positive, which I feel like is, it should be 
that should be fairly easy for people to do, right? If you just spend just a couple of minutes thinking about, okay, I tried this, I failed, but what did I learn and what can I use to do it better next time? And honestly, people who, if you're not failing, you're probably not trying anything new. Yeah. Which or that sounds horrible. Or you're really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which, you know, that could be you because yeah. you don't fail. So, yeah. well, no, I, I, I do fail. But okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just, I really love that. We're like taking it, spinning it from the negative to the positive. I thought that was a, uh, an important point to make and appreciated that Stephanie shared those thoughts with us. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's a good spot to take a quick break for a quick commercial. And we will be back shortly to finish our conversation on failure. Hey everyone, we wanted to take a quick break to tell you about our upcoming course on time management that launches on Monday, April 12th. If you ever find yourself asking for more hours in the day or time with the family, this is what you need to help master your time and your schedule. The course is called Time Bomb and all the details can be found on our site under the courses tab. Starting on April 12th, we'll have a completely free assessment designed to help you understand where you're strong and where you may need to focus to help you improve how you use the 24 hours we all get each day. Be sure to also check out our partners and the bundle offer we have that will give you a few additional tools to help you take control of your days. You can find out all the information you need on sbpace.com. And we're back. We are continuing our conversation on failure. And we are going to, um, what do you want to get into? Some of the other uh, comments we got from the other uh, people who responded? Yeah, but first I want to ask you a question. What... um... Tell me about a significant failure in your life. I'm, uh, we talked about this earlier or last week and and like honestly trying to figure out something where I'm like, this is like, like a significant failure, like business failure that I've had. Like I, I can pick moments, but they're like mistakes where it's like, oh, I should have done this or that in that one instance, but it wasn't like a make or break. It was like, they're all learning experiences. I mean, the, the, probably the biggest one is when I left the, and it's not even a failure. Like I left the, my partnership in the the coffee shops here in Richmond. Yeah. Um, but it was like, I tried everything that I possibly could to make this thing work. Um, and in the end, like I just got down to the end and I was like, this is, I've done everything that I possibly can. And I, I'm, I'm miserable. My partner's like, she wasn't making any concessions or anything like that. And finally, like, it's like, I'm, I'm done. I'm out. Like, I'm and, out. and it wasn't like, you know, the business didn't fail. I didn't fail. Like, you know, it was, you know, it was just time to go. Yeah. I, so I think for me, one that comes to mind and, you know, there are a few for me. <laughs> um, I want to go back to a um, client that you and I worked together um, a couple of years ago. And I don't know, like, I, Looking back now, I can say that the majority of the people on the senior staff were just batshit crazy, Correct. right? And, um, but the, the one, the, the person that I was working directly for that had brought me in, I didn't, I failed to recognize her patterns of how she treated human beings. For some reason, I thought I was exempt from it, that I would never become part of the, her pattern. And I can remember talking to, um, well, now our friend, Heather, who has been on the, you know, the done a couple of episodes with us, um, Heather, who is a therapist who said to me, I can't believe you thought you were never going to fall victim to what she was doing, because this is a clear pattern. And you saw it from the moment you walked in the door and I was there for almost a year. And when it happened to me, I was so blindsided by it, but it ended up being the end of my contract there. Like she literally, like that was her, her go-to move was she just, you know, I like to joke that I'm an emotional amputator. Like I will just cut you out of my life. If you like, you know, disappoint me to the point where I'm like, yeah, no, I just emotionally amputate. She legit just removed people. Didn't care. Like iced them out and I did not see it coming and I should have big, big failure. And I was unprepared for it when it happened. But, um, I've spent more time paying attention to human behavior as a result of it, for sure. And um, really, with very few exceptions, there's nobody from that company other than a couple of people that we're still friends with that I would even speak to again. 
I'm like, y'all were nuts. Yeah, that's why I don't make any emotional connection with people I work with. So <laughs> I haven't spoken to any of them since I left either. I don't even have their phone numbers or emails. There's no way for me to speak to them. <laughs> right on, right on. Um, all right, let's 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 talk about some more of the um, quotes that we got. So I like uh, the very kind of the uh, the very end of of Dr. Davia. She was talking about uh, it's a way for her to discover what she's good at and not. And I think the and not is a crucial part of understanding failures because you can't be good at everything. I will never be a professional basketball player. I'm never going to beat myself up over that either. So it's one of those things where like, I know after trying to play basketball when I was younger, I'm not coordinated enough. I've got a two inch vertical, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Is it really two inches? If I'm lucky on a good day, not today. It isn't, that's for sure. Um, but the, uh, the, you understand what you're not like what you can't do. And so you don't have, like, you shouldn't continue to try to do that unless it's something like you want to improve the way, you know, you do whatever it is, like it's a hobby or, or, you know, something like that or something that's important to you. But if it's something like I'm not good at social media, awesome. Hire somebody to do that for you. Yeah. I was thinking about it from the perspective of, of um, our business. Right. And there are things that you know, neither one of us want to do, neither one of us are particularly good at. And, you know, when you're first starting, you're not a lot of options. You don't, if you don't have the money to pay somebody else to do it, if you haven't planned on that, then you have to figure out a way to do it. Right. And maybe you suck at it for a while and you get better, or maybe it's just like, all right, let me find the easiest way to do this. And we'll kind of hack our way through it until we can afford to pay somebody else. But I don't, yeah, I know I would not consider that to be a failure at all. I would, Although that's an interesting way to look at it, right? Because there are certainly things that could be considered failures on a day-to-day basis. I don't think I ever look at failure on that micro of a level, right? Oh, I have a really good failure story that I would love to tell. I would love to share it with you Okay. because it's about someone else. <laughs> this is what I have to deal with, folks. <laughs> Middle of a thought, just switch to another one. And I'm like, wait, was that... <laughs> I don't know where we're going now. Is that a failure? Is that a fail on my part? Yes. Yeah. No, I, 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 you need to like wave a sign, like change in directions, like a fucking turn signal or something. So I know. (laughs) Blinka, 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 blinka. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So when I was little, I'm talking, I was probably like four or five years old and my sister was, (laughs) God, I hope she listens to this episode because she will murder my face for telling this story. She still gets upset about this story. Um, she was making, she used to have to make dinner for us. Right. And she was not, my mom was not home. She was working. And so she would make dinner for me and, um, her, for us four kids and, um, my dad, cause we didn't have the rest of the family was hadn't arrived on the scene yet. And one time she decided to make these cookies, these chocolate cookies. And I don't know what she did or what she forgot to do. What age was she at the time? Uh, she's probably like nine or 10. Okay. And she makes these cookies and literally when she takes them out of the oven, it legit looked like dog shit, like all over the cookie tray. And we laughed so hard, me and my two brothers and my dad and my sister cried. Like I'm talking for hours. She was so upset. She cried. She still to this day, you can't tell the story without her getting upset because she just thinks it was like the most critical failure of her youth and i just think it's like the funniest story ever i still can see those cookies on that cookie sheet and remember her crying and me just laughing does that make me a terrible person no not at all (laughs) you're supposed to make fun of your siblings yes yes so that was you know big failure i wonder if that she considers that to be her life failure god she's lucky if she (laughs) (laughs) right (laughs) one time when i was nine and screwed up the cookie yeah yes exactly exactly um, yeah, so let's talk about another um, quote that we have. I like Stacy's a lot as well. Stacy took it on the self-care and how much she had failed in 2020 with self-care and had spent so much time. And I probably a lot of people failed in 2020 on self-care. Let's be real. 2020 was a weird year. Yeah. And so she has made this effort for 
2021 to really focus on self-care and that she uses failure as a way to push herself to be better, to learn from what she's, the mistakes she's made and figure out how she can leverage that to become better at whatever it is that she's, she's looking at or trying to do. Yeah. And I think that, uh, especially for entrepreneurs and we've covered this a handful of times, including the, that Saturday series we had in December, where it's just the, the mental health, the wellness, the well being. It's something that a lot of business owners skip over because you've got bills to pay. You've got employees to work with. You've got orders going out the door, the buildings on fire, literally or figuratively, whatever. Um, and the last thing that you really care about is your own well-being. And I think that that's something that a lot of people need to focus on and, and a lot of places where business owners fail. And I mean, I know if we're going to talk about that, like as a failure or something that, um, I mean, for the majority of, of my time when I was in restaurants, I was only focused on the restaurant. There was no personal time outside of that. Luckily, I mean, restaurants in general are a pretty social place to begin with. So it's not like I was missing out because most of my friends I worked with. So it was, you know, whatever, but uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, there's the, the lifestyle that goes with bars and restaurants. So a lot of drinking, you know, cigarettes, no sleep, you know, odd hours, working too many hours, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that's something that I, for, you know, the majority of my twenties and into my thirties, I just, I never bothered to take care of myself. Yeah. That's a, that's a big um, part of that, that industry, right? Yeah. And you're just kind of going all nonstop and you are just by nature sort of a, um, we're very much, very similar in this, in this regard, all or nothing, right? You are all in on something or kind of all out on it. So I can see how that would be, could be problematic for you. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, on the flip side, it's, it, I enjoy stressful working environments and the, the chaos and all of that. So it's, you're kind of, you're feeding it. For me, it's, it's like, I'm getting it. Like, I don't know, it's some sort of like masochistic or sadist. I don't know. I can't remember which one it is. It's masochistic. The, one, the one where you hurt yourself or like getting hurt or whatever. What, Mas yeah. Masochistic. Yeah. Um, where it's like the, the chaos is the stress is not healthy, but it's also something that I kind of thrive it's on. It's exhilarating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, you're about to see exhilaration on a new level. Oh, yeah. Between SB Pace and the new restaurant. Yeah. Exhilaration on a new level. Let's talk about what Tony says. Okay. Yeah. Walk us through it. Uh, well, I mean, his is just, uh, I think, I mean, because I kind of, uh, when I did my, when I did my response as well, it's kind of uh, in, uh, response to his, but it's just the, the, you know, the giving up and not showing up. It's, it, it failure is uh, for him. It was the, um, staying consistent is, is the key to avoiding failure that you just need to just keep at it, keep going at it. And, you know, it, it's, if we were to take, let's say, uh, working out for somebody who was like, you know, who, who may have not been in the self-care into self-care in 2020 and, and 2021, they want to get in better shape or whatever. It's, that consistency of, yeah, you might not be able to run 10 miles every day or whatever it is, but just get out. Just the fact of like getting up and doing something, whether it's just going for a walk around the block or, I mean, it, they always say in terms of like sleep or whatever, you shouldn't sleep in on the weekends. Like you should wake up at the normal time every day because that's just better for your body. And it's like, all right, we'll get up doesn't mean you have to go for a run, but get up, you know, make some coffee, read the news, relax, but just keep that consistent, you know, that consistency, that routine. So Monday morning comes along and you want to get back into working out. It's, you know, you're not fighting yourself, you know? Well, I don't know who they are that say that, but I don't like them very much. Yeah, well, <laughs> Most people, you know, have, have just sort of these internal clocks anyway. And unless they're, unless they're just really, really have very erratic schedules, they wake people typically wake up at the same time every day or, you know, within like a, you know, certainly within a half an hour of, of it. So um, I liked what he said, you know, the consistency, I think it's really important to remember that it reminds me that you have to temper your expectations when you're going into something, right? So you can't, I mean, you can set your sights that you're going to, you know, open up a business and have, you know, your first year, you're going to make a million dollars. Sure. You can suspect, you can set your expectations at that or set the goal at that, 
but I think you also have to understand that you, if you don't hit that, that that's not necessarily a failure in terms of like you have failed on an epic level as much as you probably failed at setting appropriate goals. Yeah, you need but it. you didn't. Yeah, but you didn't. Your business isn't failing, right? You have to kind of temper your expectations and know, you know, like when you're, you, if you're not a runner, you can't say I'm going to run a marathon next weekend and you know run half a mile today and then go run that marathon of 26.2 miles and you're like good to go it doesn't work like that right everything is a build up and you just build up over time and and you get better and that's the same with running a business with learning things learning a language like relationships all of it it's you learn as you go everything life is an iterative process that's a really good quote. We should use that as the clip, as the as the clip for this one, the promo clip. I'm the producer, so I determine which clip we use. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. And I'm gonna I'm not even gonna try and argue with you on yes, that. Yes, exactly. Executive producer as well. Oh, we're at it. <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, I, I think that I mean just a, one last point before we wrap it up here on that is that I like what you're saying, the the setting the goal of I'm gonna have a million dollars in sales, but if you don't hit it, it's you need to figure out where the failure is. Like if, if your car breaks down, you don't just go buy a new car. You figure out what's broken and yeah. fix that part. And hopefully, I don't know, some people might just go buy a new car. But. Right on, right on. But you know, I mean, like, so we, I, as an example of, I guess you could look at this as failure, goal setting, iterative process, whatever. Back in November, I set a goal for us that in... March, we were going to have a hundred thousand dollar month, right? Mm -hmm. That we were going to have, and that would have been a really big number for us at the time in November, yeah. right? That still is a big number for us, right? Didn't we place a bet on that? We did, and I think I owe you a thousand dollars because on we, top of yeah, I know, <laughs> yes, because we did not hit a hundred thousand dollars. But I don't. What we did was we took that number of a hundred thousand dollars and we broke it out into the steps we had to take to build up to get there, right? And what would we have to do over the next five months? Cause I think we um I, I I was like five months to fire was the the name of the the um project. And I said when we get to the by the end of March, we in March we will have collected a um, invoice out for hundred thousand dollars in revenue and we will not hit that number, but we didn't do terrible. March was, will be our highest revenue generating month ever. Yep. And we took all of these appropriate steps and we iterated our way through it. We found where we could improve. So did I set a bad goal? I don't even feel like it was a bad goal because I like the fact that we had this big target that we could go after. What's that? What's that name of that goal that you hate? The the B hag. Yeah, <laughs> we wanted to we say call that. It a stretch goal. Stretch goal, yes. So we had a stretch goal, and it wasn't. Um, you know, I I wanted to. I think we both would have loved to have hit that number. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and but I I also now will say we're not far off from that number. Like we'll, we will get there and there will be a month within the next several months where we will hit that number and it will feel really fucking good. Yeah. Yeah. So, but not a failure it, because we learned along the way, we created systems and processes to help us get there and we'll continue to iterate our way through it and just figure out how to keep moving forward. Yep. So that's going to be it for the show today. I want to thank all of our listeners and you can... Uh, find out more about us and what we do in our show notes. Do you want to thank me for co-hosting no, this one with you? Oh. Absolutely do not. Well, I want to thank you. No, you don't. For taking the time to do this one with me because I, I really liked this topic and I appreciate that we spent some time on it. You can connect with us on social media. We're on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and we have a YouTube channel. You can also reach us on sbpace.com. And while you're listening to our podcast on your favorite platform, make sure to subscribe, like us, review us if possible, and uh, just give us any feedback that you might have. Yeah. And reach out to us about any topics that you'd like to hear. We have a form on our website. Fill it out. Let us know what you want to hear about. Or you can be a guest on the show if you want by filling out the form for that as well. And oh, did I tell you we wrote a book? 
It's is called. That, is that a question for me? Yeah. I'm well, well aware of the fact that we wrote a book. I was a part of it. What's the book called? Seriously, now what? A small business guide to disaster preparedness. What's it come with? A companion workbook. Right on. And if you've already bought that book, you can go out and review it for us. And if you haven't, go get it on Amazon. We'd really appreciate it. And we know it'll help your small business. That's it for today. I'm Corey. And I'm Julie. And this was BizQuick, helping helping small businesses across America.